kids do not have great attitudes. Nealon's answer was straightforward. Give the team leadership and set high standards of performance. My plan of attack is very simple. We're going to treat our kids fair and we're going to be tough. We're going to ask them to commit themselves to excellence in everything that they do. The positive approach and commitment to performance of Coach Nealon swept through the program like a spring breeze. Suddenly, there was an atmosphere of optimism. Things were changing, and once again, the Mountaineers were on the winning track. Everything's changed. Everything's new at West Virginia. We have a new coaching staff, a new athletic director. We have a new football stadium that seats 52,000 people. We have a new facilities building that's going to be as good or better than anybody's in the country. So the time to come to West Virginia is now. You're laying out going in this direction, you got to be laid out going in that direction. You see what I mean? You can't let your body... Spring practice at Old Mountaineer Field revealed that a key ingredient was missing in the football program. I inherited a team that's hungry for discipline. They have pretty good attitudes. They just need a leader that will not accept anything except a commitment to excellence. Instilling discipline was just a part of the challenge facing Nealon and his coaching staff. They had only a few weeks to install a completely new offensive structure. The Mountaineers would feature a multiple eye formation, a complex attack that offers exciting variations. We feel the way to move the football is with multiple sets. We're going to have wing sets, pro sets, pro sets with men in motion, shifting guys out of the backfield, anything it takes that we can get an advantage strategically on our opponent. John Denver, the Mountain State's adopted favorite son, paid a special visit to the campus as part of the gala opening ceremonies for the new Mountaineer Field on September 6th. Mountaineer fans from all over the state made the trek to Morgantown that day to witness the special housewarming. It was a proud moment for all West Virginians. Their 50,000-seat stadium is one of the finest football complexes in the country. Like a child on Christmas morning, they were ready to tear off the wrapping and play with their new shiny toy. Welcome to New Mountaineer Field. I have been waiting a long time for this wonderful opportunity to welcome all of you to this great stadium, the finest stadium in the United States. This is a day for all West Virginians to be proud as we dedicate this stadium. Coach Nealon, I say, let's go Mountaineers! And the Mountaineers did go that day. Their brand new offense exploded for 483 yards and six touchdowns to christen their new home with a resounding victory over the Cincinnati Bearcats. Senior Robert Alexander, fresh from the long off season, shot out of the gate like a rocket, rushing for two TDs and a career high 187 yards. Fired up offensive line blew out the Bearcat defense, and number 31 did the rest, twisting and turning as he fought his way forward for precious yards. Senior fullback Walter Easley also started the season with a bang as he bowled his way in for two touchdowns against a beleaguered Cincinnati defense. The Mountaineers' rushing prowess opened up the game for Oliver Luck, 
and the junior quarterback took full advantage, hitting on 10 of 15 for two touchdowns, one to wide receiver Daryl Miller. And a sideline squeaker to Cedric Thomas. This scoring barrage was accompanied by outstanding defensive play. An aggressive pass rush made life miserable for the Bearcat quarterback as the Mountaineers racked up four sacks and frustrated the Cincinnati aerial attack. Sophomore linebacker Dennis Folks, number 50, showed why he would be the leading tackler at season's end as he stung the Bearcats for 11 tackles, eight of which were unassisted. For the more than 50,000 fans, this was truly a red-letter day. The new stadium, new coach, and new team had come together to produce an exciting afternoon. The cherished memory as the new era in Mountaineer football officially began. If I'm talking to a recruit about West Virginia, the first thing we're going to talk about is academics. We are very, very fortunate in the fact that we have one of the great academic schools in the country. I don't care if the kid wants to be a doctor, he wants to be a lawyer, he wants to be a dentist, he wants to go into agriculture, he wants to go into business, he wants to go into education. It doesn't matter. It's here. Although WVU has made strong commitments to its athletic programs, the primary emphasis is providing student athletes with a quality education. A multitude of career development and degree programs ensure that the athlete is prepared to meet the challenges of society after his playing days are over. When we recruit a young man, I am making a commitment to his mom and dad. We'll do every single thing in our power to help your son be a graduate of West Virginia University because that's the bottom line. That commitment goes beyond modern facilities and an outstanding faculty. An extensive academic counseling service headed by Garrett Ford keeps track of the athlete's academic progress and provides personal assistance when needed. Ford was an outstanding halfback for the Mountaineers and returned to campus after a stint in the pros. He believes that academic success depends on a good beginning. We are really concerned with the freshmen to get off on the right foot. And from day one when they come in, I, I explain to them that you're here to get an education. And what I do is I check their schedules, I arrange study halls, tutors, freshman orientation, and I do a lot of personal counseling with the athletes. And I think that a lot of athletes are really insecure people in the academic setting. One thing we've done here, I think we've turned the corner as far as them having pride in academic settings. Quarterback Oliver Luck is a good example of that pride. Number 12 is a history major with an impressive 3.94 grade average. As a result of that achievement and his performance on the gridiron, Luck was named a first-team academic All-American. Oliver threw for 1,874 yards, and his 19 touchdown strikes set a new school record. Spacious parking at New Mountaineer Field has spawned a new phenomenon at West Virginia, the tailgate party. Students and alumni gather to enjoy some pregame refreshments and socializing as they discuss the upcoming contest. Despite an ominous sky and the threat of rain, the Merrymakers were out in full force for the homecoming game against Virginia, and their spirits were high. A close defeat by Maryland was the only loss, and at 3-1, the Mountaineers were off to their best start in years. A fired-up Mountaineer team charged onto the field, anticipating a win in their first homecoming game in the new stadium. And this optimism seemed justified as Robert Alexander exploded for 61 yards on the second play of the game. But in a series that would characterize the first half, the offense stalled and the Mountaineers had to settle for a field goal. On their next possession, Oliver Luck's pass was deflected into the hands of a Cavalier defender, and the first seeds of frustration sprouted on the West Virginia sideline. Come on, Ollie, you've got to handle that. Give him a little one. Get him up and then get it over his head. Come on. Taking advantage of the costly turnover, Virginia bowled into the end zone to take the lead. 
Undaunted, the Mountaineers charged back with a drive to the 13. But once again, the offense sputtered, forcing another Steve Sinclair field goal. The costly mistakes and failure to execute by the offense cast a shadow of gloom over the entire squad. And the defense, which had held Virginia at bay, began to buckle. The Cavs, sensing that their opponents were on the ropes, were looking for the knockout punch. This proud Mountaineer team that had looked so impressive in its first four games was suddenly on the verge of being blown out after a disastrous first half. As the Mountaineer band performed its intricate maneuvers, an anxious crowd wondered if their team could regain its poise and prevent an impending upset. The answer came quickly as Calvin Turner pounced on a Virginia fumble deep in its own territory. A rejuvenated Mountaineer offense moved quickly to the fore, and this time, they did not falter. As the third quarter wound down, luck threaded the needle to Daryl Miller, who took it in unmolested to move the Mountaineers back out in front. But the complex chemistry of momentum that had started to bubble now erupted as West Virginia recovered a short kick to set up another Oliver Luck airstrike, this time to Cedric Thomas. The frustrated depression of the first half had turned to joy as an excited Don Nealon exhorted his team to keep up the pressure. But it was the defense who scored the final blows. Darrell Talley snagged the Virginia pass out in the flat and ran it back for yet another West Virginia score. The Cavaliers coughed up the ball on their next possession into the waiting arms of Delbert Fowler, and the big linebacker lumbered in for the touchdown. threatened upset was turning into a lopsided massacre, and the emotional relief was obvious on the sideline. We got him, we got him. Come on, let's go! A stunned Virginia team was floundering, and the Mountaineer defense closed in for the kill like sharks in a feeding frenzy. This team in transition had shown real character as it fought off the frustration of a mistake-filled first half to stage one of the most exciting comebacks in Mountaineer history. But around the world in a much different mountain setting, another school was planning its homecoming festivities. Warm Pacific beaches of Honolulu would provide an exotic backdrop for the first meeting ever between the Mountaineers and the rainbows of the University of Hawaii. After 6,000 miles through six time zones, the longest Mountaineer road trip in history, the team was welcomed with the traditional Polynesian greeting. Football is a big event in Hawaii. Although the local media made a slight error with colors, they were on target with the threat posed by West Virginia's Robert Alexander and were anxious to hear his comments. A special transcontinental phone hookup kept the fans back home in touch as Coach Nealon and Woody O'Hara took calls as usual for their weekly radio talk show. Over 4,000 fans made the trip to Hawaii, and a poolside pep rally gave some of them a chance to rehearse for the Saturday night clash. Moving the entire football operation to Hawaii for a week was a monumental task, but months of careful preparation eliminated most logistical problems and provided minimal disruption of the all-important practice schedule. No trip to Hawaii would be complete without some sun and fun in the surf. And the players and staff found a little time to relax as the countdown to game time continued. 
a satellite feed beamed the game back to West Virginia via public television. And Mountaineer faithful all over the state tuned in at 1.30 in the morning for live coverage of the contest. The Hawaiians' concern about Robert Alexander was justified. Number 31 had an outstanding night as he ripped through the Rainbow's defense for 152 yards on the ground. Equally impressive was the performance of the defense as they swarmed on the Hawaiian attack, holding the Rainbow scoreless for three quarters. But with Oliver Luck on the sideline most of the game with a mild concussion, the Mountaineers could only muster two field goals during that time. Luck came back in the fourth quarter to spark a Mountaineer scoring drive. But the long journey and crippling injuries caught up with the squad as the Rainbows took a 16 to 13 lead with only 19 seconds remaining. Tight end Mark Rao endured a brutal hit to set up a last second field goal attempt. But Hawaii blocked it, giving an exhausted Mountaineer team their second defeat of the season. Don Nealon was a worried man as the Mountaineers traveled to Pitt for their annual brawl. Jet lag and the loss of a day's preparation had taken its toll on the team. Now they must face two top ten clubs on back-to-back -back weekends, Pitt and Penn State. West Virginia got an early break when Pitt bumbled a Kurt Carrion punt, and Andre just recovered it on the rain-soaked turf. Two plays later, Oliver Luck avoided a fierce pass rush and found C.T. Cedric Thomas in the end zone for six. But in a devastating second period, the Panthers mounted an offensive blitz to build an insurmountable lead. A besieged Oliver Luck spent most of the afternoon scrambling for his life as the nation's number one defense disrupted the Mountaineer attack and allowed only one other West Virginia score. Freezing drizzle greeted the fans for the 47th meeting of the Mountaineers and the Nittany Lions. This heated rivalry always produces hard-hitting football, and this year was no exception as the team slugged it out on the waterlogged turf. The defense was splendid, holding Penn State to only 10 points each half. And on an afternoon when the offense was as cold as the rain, it was the defense that set up the big plays. Mike Dawson blocked a punt out of the end zone in the third quarter for a safety, and freshman Steve Newberry raced 78 yards on the ensuing free kick to set up an Oliver Luck to Billy Evans' touchdown strike. Number 90, Darrell Talley, burrowed into a swarm of wet bodies to dig out a Penn State fumble and spark another Mountaineer score in the fourth quarter. Walter Easley bowled his way in from the nine, and suddenly West Virginia was on the verge of a major upset as it trailed 20 to 15 in the waning moments. The special team pounced on the onside kickoff, but the Mountaineers' hopes were dashed a few plays later with a turnover, and West Virginia suffered its most heartbreaking defeat of the season. After sputtering for four games, the Mountaineer offense finally exploded against Temple, and the man who lit the fuse was Oliver Luck. Luck dissected the Owls secondary like a skilled surgeon, completing 20 of 25 with five touchdown strikes to roll up 314 yards in the air. 
The major incisions were made by Cedric Thomas. Number nine seems to specialize in part-stopping snags in the corners of the end zone. And his two TD receptions brought his season total to nine, a new school record for the most touchdown catches in a single season. The Owls held Robert Alexander to only 20 yards rushing, but nine of those yards were big ones, as number 31 waltzed in for a score in the second quarter. But it was the Owls' offense that created the major headaches for the Temple defense with costly turnovers that were gobbled up by the ball-hungry Mountaineers. Luck added insult to injury as he converted three of the giveaways into touchdowns to bring the Mountaineers total to 41 points and 460 yards in a win that restored the offensive power that West Virginia had shown at the start of the season. The offense continued to flourish as the Mountaineers kicked off their final road game against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Senior fullback Walter Easley was the man of the hour with one of the finest performances of his career, pulling his way forward like a battering ram. Number 46 rushed for 93 yards as he fought and scratched for two big Mountaineer touchdowns. Oliver Luck was 15 of 26 with one TD as he maintained the rhythm he had regained in the Temple game and guided the Mountaineers to their second straight victory. Dennis Folks and Daryl Talley continued to chalk up tackles, homing in on the number one and two positions for total tackles at the end of the season. Mountaineer pass defense put a serious dent in Ed McMichael's 67% completion rate as they nailed him for four interceptions. But of special note was the impressive play of number 48, sophomore Mickey Walzak. Mickey rushed for 83 yards and caught five passes, including a TD strike, to establish himself as a leading contender to fill the vacancy left by the departure of seniors Alexander and Easley. The season was a record-breaking year for the Mountaineers as a group of talented seniors closed out their careers. Cedric Thomas broke the season touchdown reception record with 10, and his 22 career TD catches was also a new school mark. Robert Alexander became only the fourth runner in Mountaineer history to break the 1,000-yard mark as he galloped for 1,064 yards this season. Aggressive hustle of number 95, Delbert Fowler, won him a berth in this year's Senior Bowl. And the spirited leadership of Captains Fulton Walker and Gordon Gordon will be missed by all. New Mountaineer Field set some records of its own as home attendance soared past the quarter million mark. The stadium, the basketball coliseum, and the completion of the indoor practice field will give West Virginia one of the finest college athletic complexes in the entire nation. But for new coach Don Nealon, it was an especially important year as he led the Mountaineers to a 6-6 six and six mark to halt their losing trend dead in its tracks. The inspired play of underclassmen Oliver Luck, Steve Newberry, Daryl Miller, Billy Evans, Dennis Folks, and Daryl Talley will aid Nealon as he looks to the future. And the help-wanted signs are out. There's no delay. West Virginia's on the winning track. And for Don Nealon and the Mountaineers, the time is now. Hey, Sally Mayer, way to go, Tara!